ahead and have a couple head bolts ready just so I can put it down in here. I usually use the larger holes where the alignment dells are just to get it started, get everything lined up so it doesn't want to move around on me. And then I'll work on getting the head snug down by tapping it with a rubber mallet in a couple places. Not with anything hard, just something soft to kind of persuade it back into place. So now we got pretty much lined up, I'll start running down the head bolts just gently, just enough to get them started so I don't have to do them by hand. I'm not going to use this cordless steel to actually torque them down by any means. I will use it to help me get the thread started. Just work your way around, kind of hop them from side to side, corner to corner, crisscrossing the best you need to. Make sure we get it close. And so I've got on a low torque setting. I'm not using this to torque it down by any means. And this right here is the actual torque sequence for the head bolts. Uh, this is the left side head. Uh, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Basically, you're kind of doing a spiral pattern going outward. That's what we're going to be following when we do the torque procedure, uh, both with the foot pounds and also with the 130 degrees. So follow this pattern for torquing down the bolts. What you see right here is the actual torque specs for the head bolts. Uh, it's actually four steps in all. We're going to be tightening them initially to 22 foot-pounds following the pattern that I showed you just a few seconds ago. Also then we move up to 33. Uh, we verify that they're still at 33 and then we need to do a 130 degree turn. Now you can do it in multiple increments. For example, it says do 40 and then a 90, whatever you have room for under the hood. Well, 130 is the actual final turn we're going to do as far as degrees. So before we do that 130 degree torque rotation, we've already gone to the steps. We've already done our, done our 22, we've already done our 33, we've rechecked our 33, and now we got to get ready to do our 130. Now what I like to do is clean off the heads of the head bolts and brake clean, get them nice and dry, and we'll use a little touch of paint here, something that it, that's pretty bright you'll see. And I'll make a mark. I'll probably put it at the 9 o'clock or excuse me, the 6 o'clock position at the bottom of the bolt so that when I do my torque of 130, I can actually see where I'm rotating it to because odds you doing 130 in one increment is probably not going to happen. So you may have to do it in steps. So of course if I've got a mark, I know roughly where I'm at. a small mark so I'll put it around nine o'clock I'll consider that zero degrees so that when I start rotating it I get a reference mark unless you got one of those high dollar digital torque angle gauges that actually can remember the position when you let go I don't so I use the paint marks and they get me pretty close to where I need to be now the cylinder head's on, the bolts are torqued. We go ahead and start putting the bolts where the front timing cover uh, went into the cylinder head. Now, that's that rubber insert, remember? Make sure each one of them's got it. Make sure you put it up in the hole while you're inserting the bolt. The torque on these are 106 inch pounds. 106 inch pounds on the bolts that we put out, pulled out of the front timing cover for this cylinder head. Now it's time to go ahead and put the thermostat housing back on. Then looked at the seal. Now the seal looks like it's distorted, but it's not. That's just the way it's designed because of the little nipples they've got around the perimeter of the gasket. It kind of kicks it to where it kind of gives it some flat areas around, but it's still raised up, so we got a good contact surface. Now, when we go back with it, the two bolts that we'll be using, the torque on those are going to be nine foot pounds. So we're jumping from inch pounds up to foot pounds now. Nine foot pounds on the two bolts for the thermostat housing that we took off so that we could access some of those bolts that went through the timing cover to the cylinder head. Now I've had the lifters sitting in a container of oil throughout this repair once they were taken out. So I've got them to where they're kind of damp now while the residuals already kind of wiped off. Let's go ahead and insert them into the ports here. For the lifters. Make sure they sit all the way down. Then I'll follow it up with the rocker arm that have been soaking as well. I've noticed on some engines, especially the Hemi's, uh, pre-soaking the lifters doesn't really make a difference. 
on these though it does help a little bit as far as startup not having as much noise uh, either way it will clear out eventually uh, so there you go We've got these all installed and we'll work on getting the rock arms on and then we'll start taking the cam bearing caps off set them neatly to the side and then we'll go ahead and pre-lube the ports that the cam's going to sit down in and then we'll work on getting them into their rest position and we'll worry about torquing down the cam bearing caps make sure when installing the roller rockers that you uh, the curved area right here goes right down there on top of the lifter and then the squared off area goes right on top of the valve make sure it's seated properly that way you don't have one out of position or on backwards or upside down for heaven forbid just make sure that they are lined up properly just going through here and install every one of them so I've grabbed one of my cam shafts I went ahead and figured out which one it was by the casting mark that says L I so we know it's the left intake so when I get ready to put it back on it's gonna be my intake I've got some engine assembly Lewis some Lucas right here I'm just gonna put it across all the bearing surfaces it's like lubing up any kind of a camshaft just kind of work it around make sure all the lobes and the bearing contact surfaces have adequate amounts and I come back I'll smear it around a little bit better with my hands and then I will sit this back in the cylinder head in its rest position like I told you what the rest position basically is is where there's not much spraying tension on the valve springs and the cam lobes so I'll go ahead and sit it back in place and we're going to be using the holes as I reference you'll know you're in the rest position because as you're installing the cam it'll roll over to a spot and then it'll lay flat within the cam bearing areas anyways if you had it any other way up it want to kick up because some of the cam lobes may be making contact with the roller rockers we're going to make sure that it's in that rest position with these holes pointing almost straight up for the vehicle not perpendicular with the head but pretty much straight up with the vehicle so that get as close and as you can see it's making good contact down in there it's not kicking up I can go ahead and start just putting the bearing caps on and just gently running down the bolts we'll actually come back and torque them down so if you're going to be using an electric impact, put it on your lower setting just to get them on so you're not sitting there turning them by hand. And I wouldn't use air, I would use the electric instead if I'm going to try to run it down. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is just repeat the same procedure for the exhaust camshaft. I've verified the lobes look good. I want to go ahead and put the assembly lube on and put it in its rest position as well. And before I start with the bearing caps, I want to make sure I'm still visually looking at the the uh, roller rockers make sure they still look like they're in place I'm doing a final check of the valve train make sure everything looks like it needs to be it nothing's out of whack nothing's installed wrong nothing fell out of position everything's looking great we'll move over to the caps I remember in the beginning when we took the caps off I told you that there are stamp marks on them so we know the front we know the number one which is gonna be the furthest forward E for exhaust so go ahead and start putting them on double check the marks even though you set them to the side hopefully in position double check just to make sure it's someone before they shipped them for the factory didn't install them wrong definitely put them exactly where they need to be now this is actually cam bearing caps you got your intake cam right here you got your exhaust cam right here and this is the order of tightening down the cam bearing caps uh, you got your one two three four five six seven eight and then on your exhaust cam one two three four five six seven eight definitely use this pattern when you're going to torque them down now you're going to torque each one of these bolts down to 89 inch pounds 89 inch pounds on all these bolts here 